Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to ASFC Chemistry. So uh, the reason I'm smiling to begin with is I accidentally just took a picture instead of starting the video, so I've really amused myself. I'm here at Salford University today to speak to my friend Mike, who did a degree with me at University College London starting in 2005. Um, he currently works at Salford University and he's going to answer some questions and show us what he gets up to in his lab. So let's get started. Hi Mike. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, right, thank you very much for agreeing to do a video with us. So I'm really, really grateful. I'm sure my students will be as well. Um, first thing I'd like to ask you, this is a really bold question. It's going to take you back to 2005. Okay. Why did you decide to do a chemistry degree at University College London? Um, I did chemistry essentially because I was quite good at it. And I got told by a lot of people that it was a good degree to do. So I just went for it. You know, it's honestly, same reason as me. Exactly the same reason as me. There was nothing more than that. Just I was good at it. I knew I wanted to do a science, and it made the most yeah. sense. There was a lot of opportunities at the time. Still are. Yeah, I'd say. It's, a, it's, it's a degree that can be used for a lot of things. So mm. seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah. Seems to have panned out okay. Yeah, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> what made you decide to continue into further research and do a PhD? Um, okay, so I did a four-year course. I had a master's at the end of it, so straight to master's. So was that the MCAM? Uh, yeah, it was the MCAM. Good. So with that, I did a sort of mini research project with um, a guy called Russell Bingham at UCL. And when I was finishing, he said, I've got a PhD position. Um, basically, if you apply for it, you'll get it because it's essentially continuing your work. And I was interested in the research, so I thought, why not carry on and you know, keep doing this? Good. Yeah. What was the research in? Um, it was on chemical vapour deposition of vanadium oxide, a metal oxide which ha is thermochromic, so at a certain temperature it changes its crystal structure, and below that temperature it allows heat to pass through it, above that temperature it reflects heat, so the sort of end use of it was to put it on windows as a glazing, uh, so that you could control the temperature of the building without having to use heating ventilation systems. Amazing. Except for the fact that at the end of my... PhD, unless you like brown windows and your house to be 68 degrees, I can't help you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and then what led you here to Salford University? Okay, so when I was finishing my PhD, I wanted to leave UCL because I've been there for eight years mm. and it's just too long to be anywhere. Um, and I got offered a position in Italy. So I was in Italy for two years. Uh, and then when I came back, I was obviously wanted to move back to the UK. Uh, saw the opening here, which was sort of a uh, in similar stuff that I was interested in working on, so I applied and here I am. Living in Italy is great. I mean, it's just a great place to live. I would advise anyone who gets a chance to live abroad to definitely do it. It's so much fun. What's your next steps then with science? What are you thinking of going on to next? Okay, so next I am going to be going to Swansea University for a fellowship, uh, which is sort of a step between uh, being a permanent member of staff at university and uh, postdoc. And I will be studying Janus particles which are named after the Greek god Janus, who had two faces. Right. Because you have one metal oxide and another metal oxide, you put them together to a nanoparticle. One side does reduction, one side does oxidation. So you can use them for hydrogen production from water. Obviously hydrogen, very good fuel because it burns to water. So I would save the world. Your plan is to save <laughs> My the world. My plan is to save the world. <laughs> what advice would you give to a student who was thinking of doing a science degree, but they weren't quite sure which one to go into? Um, I would say try and talk to people. Um, probably people who are doing it. Um, if you can, look at universities that do uh, sort of open degrees, um, what are they, uh, natural sciences, because then you can do, you can choose modules from different degrees. So it was one site that was originally started at Oxbridge, because at Oxbridge and Cambridge you can't actually do a single science. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to do, do natural, natural sciences, sciences and then you find Which I know you. is now something that UCL does as well. Because the year we uh, were at university was the first year they did it. Yeah, our friend Taya did yeah, that. Yeah, Taya did that. Um, so I think, yeah, if you're really unsure about what science you want to do, try and do something like that. Or, as I say, try and talk to people, send emails to people. I mean, a lot of academics and things are actually quite, quite friendly. They will tend to reply to these sort of things. And go to open days, have a look about, chat to your like, teachers. Most of them would have done a science degree if they're teaching science, and they'll you know, give you an idea of the sort of things that goes on. All right, thank you very much. Right, let's have a look at the work you do. Um, so, uh, the research that I'm working on at the moment is flame assisted chemical vapour deposition, or FACVD. So that's essentially, we use uh, a flame on the rig that we have here, you pump a chemical through it, the chemical goes into the flame, is activated in some way, 
and then deposited onto glass. The work that I'm doing at the moment is on silicon oxide and copper nanoparticles. So silicon oxide is put down as an anti-reflective coating and uh, copper nanoparticles are antimicrobial. So this would be used sort of in touch screens at hospitals. So obviously a lot of people touch them, a lot of people are sick in hospitals so they have compromised immune systems. Antibiotics aren't as effective as they once were so we need to make sure we can kill things without using those. So, you know, we all like touch screens, we all hate MRSA. Um, it's pretty much uh, what we're working for here. Um, so I can go through a little bit of how this works. We have a shuttle at the bottom here which takes the uh, substrates of the glass backwards and forwards. These two heads um, are the flame heads. The one on the left is for the silicon precursor. The one on the right is for the copper precursor. Uh, just now I'll just do the copper one because that's the one you can see. In here we have our copper precursor, which is copper sulfate. Uh, it's a lovely blue colour. And then I turn on the humidifier, which starts to mist it so we can get it into the sort of vapour phase. Various gas flow controls. So we have air coming through as our oxygen source of the flame burns. Propane, which goes on fire. And then our flame coming through. And then to bring the precursor through to it, we just have a nitrogen flow, which then you can see the precursor eventually comes up and you'll see when it gets to the flames, the flame will start burning a very bright green color. It shows the copper's going into it, which should happen about uh, halfway there. It should happen in a second or so. Yep, there we go. Lovely, lovely green flame. So our copper's coming through. So when I start the program, the uh, glass runs backwards and forwards underneath it, and we deposit uh, copper onto the film. And usually we would deposit a silicon layer first, and then a copper layer, and then a silica layer. And um, this is designed to sort of replicate how you'd have it in industry. To an industry, how glass is produced is it's floated on a mile long bed of liquid tin and then as you float it out it's stretched out and then you have it coming out of that hot so you make glass by the mile and then the idea is you could have one of these hanging straight over it and it would deposit it onto it as it goes out. So why do you put a uh, layer of silica over the copper? Uh, we put a little, so the copper nanoparticles are quite, uh, don't stick to the surface very well so by putting another layer over the top it's a barrier layer so they basically Touch screens obviously get touched a lot, uh, so that it would stop um, stop the copper being pulled off, and so they remain uh, biocidal. Yeah. Brilliant.